people say it can't work, black and white. However, before you turn to hate, you should always, always remember the Titans. I feel like my seventh grade substitute teacher rolling out the TV in the middle of the room right now. But yes, I want to talk to you about Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans, if you'll recall, is a movie starring Denzel Washington, where he's the coach of a championship football team that's comprised of black and white football players during the civil rights era. However, not only are they a championship football team, but they grow to love each other and, and care about each other. Now, I want you to bear with me here and think about if that plot had been slightly different. I want you to think about if the black football players had demanded that they play offense and the white football players had demanded that they play defense. And this wasn't because of some Jim Crow era policy. Instead, it was because the football players opted for that. Now, I have a feeling my substitute teachers wouldn't have been showing that movie so often. I'm here to talk to you today about a topic that's become a bit of a double-edged sword. I'm here to talk to you about diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI. And as I stand here today, I want to let you in on a little secret. I am a DEI hire. And what I mean by that is that if the individuals before me had not advocated for diversity, equity, and inclusion as a business imperative, I would not have had the opportunity to get my education at the University of Alabama School of Law. I would not work at the law firm that I do today, and I would not be standing before you on this stage. However, now the term DEI hire has become a slur. It's become something meant to pity someone who's gotten a promotion solely because of their demographics as opposed to their talent or qualifications. And why is that happening? It's happening because we have focused on DEI. We've done a good job with respect to the D. We've ensured that there's more black and brown faces coming into the workplace. We've had improvement with respect to E. Individuals of lower socioeconomic classes have more social mobility than ever before. However, I, inclusion, that's where we're struggling. And we're struggling with respect to inclusion because we've opted for intentional separation as opposed to unity. In short, we haven't done enough to bring the straight white man and the lesbian black woman together. We've focused too much on bonding social capital as opposed to bridging social capital. And I'd like to break down those terms here a little bit for you. Bonding social capital, as Robert Putnam says, is social capital that's based on one's demographic. So I want you to think of joining a group based on your race or your gender. And in contrast, bridging social capital involves joining a group based on a shared interest but not having the same demographics. And so I want you to think about joining a running club or a book club. A lot of the time when businesses have opted for diversity, equity, and inclusion policies, they have jumped to policies involving bonding social capital groups. Ensure that individuals from minorities are brought together and can talk to people about their shared experiences. And before I get more into this, I want to be clear. I am an advocate of bonding social capital groups. Whenever I moved to Alabama for law school, I'd never left my hometown. And the Black Law Students Association was my first community in Alabama and the organization where I met the law firm that I work at today. In a similar vein, I work at a law firm by the name of Lightfoot, Franklin, and White. We have a group called Wolf, Women of Lightfoot, Franklin. And it's one of the primary reasons that I wanted to work at the firm. However, I want to talk about some of the unintended consequences of bonding social capital. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., when he had a dream, he didn't think of black kids sitting on one side of the classroom and white kids sitting on the other side of the classroom. Instead, he envisioned bridging social capital. He envisioned black and white kids working together, learning together, loving each other. And with bonding social capital groups, there's the danger of the majority not getting to know minorities. While minorities are doing a great job of getting to know each other and feeling connected with each other, they're left not feeling connected to the greater workplace. 
And as a result, this leads to resentment. Of course it's going to seem like someone was only promoted due to their race or gender when you haven't had the opportunity to get to know them and they've spent their social time at the workplace only with minorities as opposed to everyone at large. Further, I wanna talk about the danger this poses for minorities. First, it poses the danger of feeling isolated from one's workplace. And a lot of the time we see problems with retention because individuals may find friends within the minority group, but they don't feel connected to the larger workplace. So they're gonna keep their friends in the bonding social capital group and then move on elsewhere. There's also the danger of minorities not feeling connected with the bonding social capital groups that they're shepherded into. For example, these groups may serve as echo chambers of tribalism that push views that are different than that individual's lifestyle. And so for example, if someone's in a black support group, it may be that the group overwhelmingly believes that one should marry someone of the black race as opposed to interracial marriage. With respect to women's support groups, it may be that the individuals in that group push for women not changing their last name at marriage or choosing to not have children. With respect to LGBTQ support groups, an individual that's a bisexual may feel pressured to date someone of the same sex so they fit into the group. And so this can lead to minorities feeling isolated, not just in the greater workplace, but also within the bonding social capital group, feeling isolated as a whole. And so how do we fix the issues that I've discussed today? Well, first, we need to make an intentional decision to bridge social capital. Go join that running club. Go join that book club. And also, if you're someone at your workplace that has a hand in uh, putting together work events, then you need to ensure that people that are different from one another are coming together and forming connections. We also need to think about combining bonding and bridging social capital together. For example, married couples and single people are examples of bonding and bridging capital coming together. With respect to bonding social capital groups, it's important that these groups continue to remain in our workplaces, but also that we ensure the individual is valued more than a collective opinion of the group. That way, all individuals in the bonding social capital group can feel welcome and heard. And closing, I want you to think about what makes the Titans special. Why do we remember the Titans? And it's not because they're a great football team, even though they were. And it's not because the football team was comprised of black and white football players, even though that was the case too. It's because they embody diversity, equity, and inclusion. They show what happens when a diverse group works together to create the best product and result possible. It shows what happens when people look at the individual as opposed to demographics and choose to show a hand. Thank you. Thank you.